You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to beg because I am a thief. Because every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. You're listening to Marriage Takeover with Eric and Tamika Thompson, helping to enrich your marriage. Hello, it's your it's your boy Eric and Tanisha. How you doing? Sorry that uh, we um uh, we just have minor difficulties, uh, but bear with us. How's everybody doing today? Let us pray. Father, heaven, Lord God, we tell you, thank you, God. We give you glory, honor, and praise because you are an awesome God. Yes, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing. God, we ask that you just have your way. Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, cleanse and wash us of all iniquity by our thoughts and deeds. Create, O oh God, in us a clean heart, renewing us the right spirit. Father, we ask that you have your way. Remove our anxieties, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. All distractions, Lord. God, we ask that you just have your way, Father, because someone is in need to hear from you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we tell you thank you. We say this prayer in your darn son, Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Ah, how you doing? Go ahead, honey. Say something. Hey, guys. How's everybody? Guess what? I'm excited about the sun being out. I know we lost, what was that, that one hour, but, oh, man, I am so excited about... The sun being out and shining. Today we are going to talk about selfishness. And I was trying, trying to make a hundred on my page because we are living from Eric's page on today. And so it's not allowing me to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. So everything is taking place. Right. It's so, okay. Um. Try it again, babe. This is all right. You got it. We're going to believe Jesus. Is that all right? <laughs> We're going to believe. We're going to, come on, pray with me right now. Lord, have thine own way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, but with, with, without further ado, ain't that how you say it? Without further ado. Without further ado, we're going to just, we you know, we're just going to go ahead and roll with this. So we're going to talk about selfishness. Um, as you see, I do not have my tablet, so I'm going to be r- rattling some things off. Do you need that? Yeah, I actually do. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Y'all bear with us on today. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But we just we just talking about uh, what we're talking about, about selfish. For what were you about to do? I thought you needed your thing. No, I'm, it's already up and rolling. I, I'm oh. cool. Okay. I'm Wait. cool. You got yours going? Mm, no. Okay. So you want your tablet then? Yeah, I was going to get it going so that you can get your tablet. <laughs> so I promise you, I'm. you know what? I'm. There's no more. I'm. You know what? We're just going to go ahead and dive right on in. So I pray everybody's having a great, having a great Sunday. We had an awesome time in the Lord this morning. And it was so funny because, you know, we were just talking about uh, uh, selfishness and being selfish. And so I began to and I began to think about that thing, you know, when you are a couple, what are now the majority of a lot of our disagreements come from a selfish motive. Would you agree? Yes. I don't think I don't I don't even think she heard my question. <laughs> You said, as a married couple, most of our motives come from being selfish. Most of our disagreements. Our disagreements, they come from us being selfish. I, I heard you, Bishop. So what would you what would you say to that? Because you look at it. How you got it? Because you got some that think about I for an eye, two for two, um, what vengeance is mine, and I'm going to repay. We ain't going to let the Lord do it. <laughs> so... Um, I, I'm really trying to fill these gaps until everything kind of cools down around here. Well, go ahead. Roll with it. Okay. 
Really? Yeah, I don't okay. Know how you got to turn it so it won't be sideways. So go ahead. Um. So we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about selfishness. And I looked at it because it's so funny because we had a we had a selfish moment this week. You remember? What was that? Oh, see, uh, never mind. She she still concentrating on this stuff. So. Okay, I'm like, I need my tablet now. I'm sorry, I, I have got to get my tablet. <laughs> Give me a second, though. What was the selfish moment this week? Uh, what was the selfish moment this week? So what had happened was, and see, this is where you got to allow, this is where you have to allow who you are, I guess, or what you all have to determine, determine, de- determine on who, I guess, you know, who's doing what. So my son came home for um for his, his spring break, which we were so happy to see him. But he um you know he had some issues going on with his car, and so I was like, okay, <laughs> oh now you remember. Now I remember. And so you know he had some issues going on with his car. So we thank God that he made it here safely, but it was see that's too high. So but. Anywho, it was to the fact of. Hold on one second. Mm-hmm. Hold on one second. Uh oh, are we trying to switch stuff around? Oh, Pastor Larry says is on Lord, look at him. Pastor Hope Will in the house. Um, she's still trying. So I'm gonna sit right here and have me a close up. Praise the Lord. How's everybody doing? And so my son came home for. Um, for spring break, I, man, I'm just saying, don't even worry about it. Okay. Well, anyway, my son came home for spring break, and so he had he needed some work to be done to the car, and so at this time, you know, she was she was able to um get the car, take it to get the car checked down and stuff like that. I wasn't able to, but at the same time, um, I had. You know, this is what I normally do. I normally take care of the vehicles, make sure everything is running and everything looking nice and pretty. But lo and behold, you know, I'm on the phone with her, and I'm saying to her, I say, hey, um, ask him because, you know, she's with the person, um, um, the, you know, the person you got to talk to, the not the dealer, the um, customer service person. And so I asked her, I, I, I said, hey, Ask him this um this list of questions. And so she don't ask him one, how much? And I say, wait a minute, that that's not what that's not what I was saying. I was like, no. Yeah, I need to know one, how much, how much of it is part, how much of it is labor. Why? Because I could probably beat that price, right? We know that as men or as people that work on vehicles or understand vehicles, but she thought upon herself, thinking, oh, it's fine. I can just go ahead and do what I want. Um, I understand. All I need to know is how much. I'm like, no. So I was like, you know what? Then it, it went into a whole, it, it bored into a whole nother thing because all of just not a- asking one question. And I said, you know what? I said, we're just going to sit back and I'm just going to chill because. What's the matter? I can't find an adapter. No, just use this, babe. It's fine. It's okay. Now, as I say to my close up, <laughs> we're going to push it on back. Uh, I'm sorry. Once all this stuff get done, we'll be all right. Sorry for all that. Pull it down. You can't see. There we be. There we are. almost go. Good job. No problem. Nothing. Go ahead. And so, where did I leave off at? <laughs> what you talking about? What you not selling? So, <laughs> what you doing? Go ahead. Oh, so what happened was, I said, hey, ask him how much does it cost, how much is in labor, and how much is in part. And so, she didn't want to say that. So, I was like, okay, wait a minute, now we got a problem. No, she asked how much it was going to cost. And then she did ask how much was in labor. And so then I was like, okay, ask how much, um, what was it? 
It was one. I see. I forgot the question. That's how bad it was. And so. How much was in parts? How much was in labor? And then. It was. Yeah. Yeah. How much was in parts? How much was in labor? What else was it? I don't remember. Oh, okay. And so, and there was another question, but the other question was very key. But to her, she didn't well, think he, it was well, very he key. I can't remember the other question. I yeah, I it was enough. very key. <laughs> it was very key to the situation. <laughs> but for some odd reason, she didn't want to ask that question. And so I'm like, listen, all right, listen. And then, so what I did well, after we got on the phone, I just called him back myself and say, hey. <laughs> Okay, and I asked all my questions that I needed to ask that she didn't ask. And so, and she was like, I hate it when you undercut me. I said, no. I said, well, if you feel that way, I no, apologize. Did you tell them that you called after I got off the phone? That's what I just said. Oh, okay. I told you you want to listen. Okay, I told you. okay. And so, uh, she was like, I hate it when you undercut me. I'm like, well... I needed to know these things so that we can see if we can go ahead if we can fix if we can go ahead and fix the car. Mm-hmm. But to her, because it did not add up to I guess common sense wise, it was mm-hmm. like uh, whatever. I I'm not even bothered about it. So then then it turned into something else. And I'm like, come on. All it was was if 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 we would take the moment and be like, you know what? Let me just ask because you normally deal with these. I don't. I don't understand the purpose of the question, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. That's not what took place. And so from it, it was like my son, I had to text my son. and was like, son, it's not your fault. Because we got into a disagreement. He was like, I don't know if you all are arguing or what. I said, like, we're just having a disagreeing moment because it was, did you, just because you didn't understand, the 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 um the the need of the question does that mean that you don't ask the question no because it did not it was not clear to you so that was a selfish act which turned into something else and so when you look at when you look at your marriage a lot of I, I've heard a lot of people say oh it's it's fifty fifty I'm gonna tell you right now. Mm-mm. It's not 50-50. It is, it is not 50-50. So when you're looking at your marriage, if if it was really, right, just take, take a look. If it was really 50-50, does that mean I, that means I wear these clothes half the time? I know that sounds silly, right? Nah. <laughs> that's because that's, that's all her. Do she wear my, my clothes 50% of the time? No. Uh-uh. So who do 50% of the cooking? You. Who do fifty percent of the uh, cleaning? Of the cleaning. You? Oh, okay, that's great. Who do fifty percent of the whatever of washing the cars? Who do fifty percent of cutting grass? <laughs> Anybody do fifty percent of picking up the, the the clipping? Nope. So what I'm saying is, is that marriage is not fifty fifty. Because one day it can be. It can be straight 99% on one end and 1% on the other. And then it can turn around in the very next minute and be 88, uh, 98% on the other end and on the 2% on the other. And so we, have, we, can't, be, we can't be so close-minded until we are being selfish um, because it's just, oh, it's just, what I, it's just what I do. It's just what I like. This is just what it is. And so we can't be so close minded to where we don't understand that um that we don't understand that hey this is something this because my my wife this is her expertise then this is what I'm a lean toward not just because of hey um it don't make sense to me I'm going to go ahead and do what I'm going to do you understand what I'm saying go ahead I didn't have anything else I'm monitoring. I'm sorry to Facebook. Because now we up and running. <laughs> now we are like back in the groove. So yes. So but go it's ahead. Fifty-fifty for sure. It's not fifty-fifty. Um, and a lot of people will tell you that it's fifty-fifty, but like Eric just said, it fluctuates, and it's important to understand the fluctuation. And it's okay. It's okay for you to be able to have 
um, a fluctuation and for you to be able to step back and for you to be able to know your differences. I know that was something that we talked about last month to Mm -hmm. get on um, just briefly to be able to know who's strong at one point, who's strong at another point, and how to be able to bridge those together so that you all can work together, so it can be a partnership, so it can be a team, and that you all can build your marriage from that particular standpoint. Right, right. Okay, sorry, my bad. And so, and so that's the thing because y'all you know understand when you're talking about long, when you're talking about longevity, and when you're talking about long life with one another, these are things that you're gonna always run into because when you learn how one, how to be like, okay, listen, because you know, like for me personally. Is 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 bike season now? You know, I I want to I want to ride. I, hey, listen, we have been cooped up for too long. <laughs> it's time to pull the throttle. You hear me? But it is like okay now, God. I understand. Yes, me riding a bike, it can yeah, it can be very selfish. But it's like what makes me selfless before I take that time to have my me time on my on my bike, right? So what is it? It's like funny. It's so funny because she was like, you know, honey, just as long as you take care, of, as long as the house is taken care of or the family is taken care of, then it's fine. I know what you're saying. It's like, oh well, you don't take care of these. No, sometimes I just, hey, it's nice. I jump on the bike and I just go. So, but what is that? Then that's being selfish. So then when I come back from a nice ride, and then I now I got to deal with what I did not take care of before I left when you have already established an agreement. Right. So that's when when you allowing your selfish your selfishness your motives to come into play, then you're not really thinking of the other. You're not really thinking of the other individual or um of or your spouse. And right. so that's the thing when your selfish motive jumps in front of what, how the other person may feel, act, or do. No, that's good. I was gonna say, and and um one of the things that um if we're taking it back to the scripture references. Zechariah uh, 7 and 6, it says, and when you eat and when you drink, do not eat for yourself mm-hmm. and drink for yourself. Mm-hmm. What's the matter? No, no, go ahead. You good. Uh, I was going to say, so that's something that's really important in that marriage situation. So right. as bike season is coming around, and I know it's coming around, so I don't need to act like I don't know that it's getting warm and it's coming around because yeah, he's yeah. going to want to go and he's going to want to. Um, <laughs> you hear me, you know, Darnell? You hear me? <laughs> He's going to want to go. He's going to want to, you know, get on his bike. But then there are some times where, again, as long as the house is taken care of, I'm good. As long as things around the, you know, I'm not the only person in the house doing certain things. I'm not the only person worrying about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, how we're going to take care of this, how we're going to do this, how we're going to do that. Basically, not me just and myself worrying about that stuff and it's taken care of because it's a partnership and we've linked up and we've agreed to take care of right. the responsibility. Right. Then right. I'm cool. And it's not going to be no drama. It's not going to be no mess just because that's something that we are establishing together to say, hey, listen, hey, babe, you know, you know, bike season is coming around. What can I do? Or I might just be like, babe, don't worry about it. Go go ahead and ride. You hadn't. Because he didn't ride a lot last season. He didn't ride a lot last season. Because I was being selfless. (laughs) I was being selfless. I did not ride a lot. But I plan on riding this year. Praise the Lord. And wave your hand at me if you hear me. (laughs) So that's, you know, something good. And then if you want to take it even a step further from what it like finances, like anything that you do, if you're trying to, um, what is a good example? Let's see if it's with finances. So I'm able to build on the finances, having the same, like, because we're different. We want to make sure that our different goals and our different ambitions, that we sit down, we talk together, that we discuss that. So that as we're moving forward in those ambitions and in right. those goals, that for me, for example, I'm big on business. I'm big on being strategic. I'm big on attending conferences. I'm big on right. learning. Right. Like I will for probably forever be a life learner. I'm big on that. But if I see something, I want to learn something new. I'm going to figure out and go through all of the details to figure out how I can do this. It's going to take up my time. It's going to take up money. It's going to take up a whole lot of different stuff. So I have to not be selfish in my own right, right to want to learn something, to want to be able to produce a, a different or another income or stru- uh, income revenue stream. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to say. I have to make sure that I'm coming to the forefront to say, hey, babe, I really want to do this. I really want to do that. You know, let's talk about it. Let's hash it out. And he's like my great voice of reason. Sometimes it's, 
he'll ask those questions that I may not want to answer or that I may not want to be asked. But he will, he will, okay, let's sit down. Let's talk about this. What's this? What's that? Did you consider this? Did you consider that? And then a lot of times it, I may not be able to pursue that opportunity because as we've talked about it, it doesn't align with the vision for the house. Right, right, right. So I can't be selfish in my own ambition to say, well, I'm going to go and do it anyway. Like, who are you to say? Right. Because then it takes me outside of that alignment that God would have me to be structured into. Exactly. And then it takes me also out of the role. So when you when you look back at that, we did that a couple of months ago. So look into that. So, so when you're being selfish, you just want to make sure that you are being aligned with, number one, the vision for the house. Right. Talk it over with your spouse. It's not that you can't always do it. It's just not in this moment. It's not the best time. Right. It's not the – in this moment is not the best time. Because you know what I'm saying? Both of you are – both of you, you're, both of you, you still your own individual. It's just that now you're one. Because I don't know about you, like with us, I understand – I, I understand our oneness because she is literally strong in the areas that I'm weak. And guess what? I am literally strong in the areas that she's weak. Right. So now we're making up that we're making that one. That's as the scripture says, and the two shall It'll become be one. one. Yep. And so in that, you still, you still have your own quote unquote desires. But do you know that even your spouse, if, if, if we can be selfless more than selfish, do you know even your spouse can even enjoy in the things that you're doing? Because some things, it can go down just the simple fact of you stop and got something to eat, and <laughs> and you get home and like, mm, wait a minute, y'all ain't eat? Well, it's just for the moment I did not consider. I did not consider my wife to see if she's eating. I could have picked up the phone, sent her a text, hey, I'm going to grab a bite. Have you eaten? Do you want something? Or... Have you cooked? You know what I'm saying? And so you, it's like you have to know who your spouse is. That's why you have got to take these, having those moments of communication. And so when you're talking about, and when you talk about, you know, when you're newly married, yeah, you got to begin that thing right. conversation because the thing, you may not have lived with your spouse. And, you know, now it's like, Okay, now that you're married, now you got to now you're finna learn an entire person why? Because now you with them literally 24 hours every right. day. So now both of you all are now learning, and so that's why it's very important that one you know what your love language is because right. if you take the time to know what your spouse's love language and take the time to even know what your love language is. Because now you don't want your spouse to be walking around with an empty love tank. Right. Because when you allow your exactly. spouse to walk around with an empty love tank, then you have not been paying attention because you've been paying more attention to yourself versus paying attention to her. So if right. you pay her or him, but if you pay attention to your spouse, guess what? It'll spark a conversation. Before I even read, before I even read the book, uh, the five, the five languages of love or the five love languages. Before I even read the book, I did take, I took a moment. I remember and asking her, "Hey, how do you feel about this? Or uh, how does this make you feel? You know, what are these certain things that you like?" So I began to know that she liked. At that point, she liked um, acts of service. It's gonna be funny because I'm gonna bring something out to you that made me laugh. But and so here I am. I'm cleaning the house, boom, because once I'm done, I'm out. Like when I first got my bike, I had been a lot of issues because I clean and I'm gone, you know. I can go ride all day. I just had to check in like uh, maybe I think it was like every three hours. Because, just so that I could make sure he was safe. Because I had that an accident. I had an accident right, one time. He, said he had an accident. So and, it's not uh, just so I can know or keep tabs. It's just so that I can make sure that he's safe. And then there are times where he's riding with a new group of people. Well, everybody doesn't ride the same. Some people ride dirty. And I just want to make sure that if he's out with this new group of people, that he's good. And we're going to be and we're going to be rolling huh, down there. Get at me. Boom. And so but and that's the thing, because I knew her love language. But then check this out. It hit a moment where it began to change, where I didn't know if her love language was acts of service or quality time. And so I was like, wait a minute, because now, <laughs> here I am, I done cleaned the house. 
because I'm ready to go ride. Now you get mad at my bike, and I was doing that stupid bike. And doing that stupid bike. I'm sorry because I just got my put my Trans Am in the shop. That's gonna be coming out soon too. Top down, you hear me? So, but oh, uh, I, I just love my toys. So, and then it came down. So now I'm like, yo, what is the problem? <laughs> what is going on? But because now I because I had it I had it put together on my. I knew that at that time her love language was quality time, so then I was able to be selfish because now all I know is that, I mean, her, her love language at that time was acts of service. So myself, I would get up early in the morning, start cleaning, and I'm gone. Just those, those things that we had agreed on that, you know, that I clean, and I'm gone. Even I might take it a bit further if I know I might be out for a long time, I might go ahead and clean the whole house so she ain't got to worry about it, and I'm gone. Because now, in my mind, I just got to go. I got to go. I got to go. It's riding time. It's going to be a nice day. We're supposed to ride in the Philly to get some uh, some cheesesteak. Listen, so now we, this, is what, this, is where, this is how my selfish act came into play until I began, when things began to change, when I started getting attitudes, when I noticed that her love tank was actually empty now. Right. No, that's good. Oh, that's good. And for those who are watching too, um, they also have a app. It's the Love Nudge. Yeah. So if you haven't heard of that, it's Love Nudge, and that's again by Gary Chapman, uh, Five Languages of Love. So that way, he'll give you and offer different resources and different ways. If you don't know how to communicate, say you don't know how to speak your spouse's love language, he offers some resources and information that you can have right there on your phone to be able to do that so that you can keep things running smoothly. And the love tanks on both sides can be filled because you can also invite your spouse to join. If you create one, you can invite your spouse to join after they've taken the test, and then that way you both keep each other's love tank filled. Right, and that is, and that is so key. In order to keep your love alive, you have to be selfless. And so when you, when you look at it, um, I want to say I think it's Matthew 19, verse 22, when um when Jesus was talking to the young man when the uh when the young when Jesus told him now that you're perfect go sell all that you have give it to the poor um and you know and give it to the poor and uh in that twenty second verse he says um oh my God he says oh basically he couldn't he couldn't do those he couldn't do those things where I'm at oh and he says okay twenty where is it at Okay, he says, but when the young man heard heard the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he was for he was one that had great possessions. So he went away sorrowful. He wanted to follow Christ, but he couldn't because Christ said, "Sell all that you have and follow me." But when you look at, when you also look at this, what made him different from Peter when Peter left a thriving business? To follow Christ. And so it's the same thing. What are you also willing to let go of so that you can be one with your spouse? Right. You have, because there's some things that you may have to let go of, I even cut back on. You know, like, you know, it rained a lot last year, so I, I, use, <laughs> I use that to the best of my ability. Baby, let's go out. You know what I'm saying? Because once I understood, I understand, it wasn't last year. No, it was this year, early part this year. When I understood as far as where, her love language turned to quality time. She was just in the office working. And I just came in the office, sat down, and I, and I started working too. And she had more joy when I was working hard, but it was just for the mere fact that my presence was in the room. And so we have to be selfless to that fact of saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to sit aside this time because I know what my wife likes, and boom, that's what we're going to do. And then it works vice versa. And we just had a question um, online. Thanks, Margo, so much for the question. She says, do you think that they change, your love language changes as you get older? And then how often do you reevaluate? So wow. I think that. I love question. Right. So I think that it does change, Margo, as you get older. And not just because it's because you're getting older. It's because you change. You mature. Life happens. And so even as your marriage 
goes through changes and your marriage goes through seasons. Liquid love. And so as your marriage is going through seasons, it's because one of the two of you or the both of you are changing in some type of way. Right. And so as that's changing, then your love language could also change. Right. So it's really important to reevaluate that. I, I'm not sure that I would say annually just because I notice that a seasonal change typically happens every five or ten years, but maybe take it every two years. Take the test again just to reevaluate, just to notice that something is changing. Or if you notice that you're not connecting or communicating or speaking each other's language as much, then at that moment go and evaluate. Just because my love language has been the same for... Mm-mm. It just changed. Stop playing. Well, no, playing. it just changed. But what I'm saying is, is it's been the same since... I know about five years. Taken. Yeah, for at least five years. Yeah, it's been about five years. And Eric hasn't changed. I'm still the same, Slim. You know what I'm saying? It's all so 20. It, it, it kind of depends on, um, you know, how often you see the change or you understand or notice the change, but it absolutely changes because you change as a person. Right. Your marriage changes. So as one of you or the both of you are changing, you're getting ready to go through that change in your season. So it's really important to understand that and to know that so that you don't think, oh, Lord, I'm going crazy. Right. Or, oh, I'm the only person going through this. No, everybody goes through a change of season everybody. in their marriage. Because everybody. you're changing. And you as a person, you as a human, you as a woman, you as a man, like you're changing. Right. So even, you know, you know how it is. You're changing because, you know, one, that Coca-Cola bottle, it, it became a three liter. You had to change with it. Because the thing is, if you... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, look, look at me. I am, I am in my first trimester. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't have, I didn't, I don't have the rock hard ass like I once had. I don't have, I don't have that anymore. I'm trying, but I'm trying to get it back. I'm trying my best to get it back. So, you I, mean, I mean, but you, but you have, but you have those. That's what JD said. The second time, that's hey, hey, but you have, but you have those times when you're changing. But it's like this: Do my love block up because now that the body is changing? Because now this is the thing. So say my thing might have been quality time, but because now I looked in the mirror, I don't look as fly as I used to. So now words of affirmation is now my love language. So you, you have to continue to keep your line of communication open, and you have to also observe your, observe your spouse because it's been, two, it's been a few times when I say, listen, oh, I think it started out with some kind of soda. Then like five years ago, no, might have been a little, maybe seven years ago, it changed to uh, a, a cherry Coke. And so I was like, oh, so you like those now. Got you. And so, and you got to learn to observe and then take mental mental note of what your spouse is now changing to. Because, yeah, remember, if you're going to keep that flowing love of water liquid, I ain't trying to, um, but if you keep that love flowing, it's going to flow into every change that your spouse takes place. But often one thing that I have noticed that things, when you allow your love to begin to harden up, then it can't flow into the next change or it can't flow into the next season because now when it hardens up, you're now in the winter of your season. I I mean, yeah, the winter season of your marriage. And then, too, it's important to not just always or necessarily the body structure, but also mentally. Like you mature and you just have less tolerance for certain things. So think about that. And then even with the women, as you get older in age, you have to consider going into the menopause. That's a whole different ball game. So understanding just the difference. And then even the men, like the men, I think they hit the mid-crisis a mid-life lot harder. Crisis. The mid-life crisis a lot harder than the women ever do. Like God. I remember when Eric, and I think he did, he did his early. I remember when Eric went through his. I was, I was just about like, to say that. What in the heck? Like, what did, What happened? <laughs> it was like all of a sudden he was wanting to be this reckless person and he wanted to go out and ride and he was thinking that he wasn't I, handsome and no, he wanted to I, get this leather jacket and he I, wanted to have a different Wait a minute. Nah, no, you see like, my hairstyle now. Yeah. Like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. But see, and it was so funny because, I mean, I didn't know if it was a midlife crisis because I had, it's like I bought a bike and then I turned around and bought a fast car. And she was, and even a friend of mine was like, dude, what you going through, a midlife crisis? 
I don't know. I just had to meet the speed. I had to meet the speed. So, but it, but it was like it was like that moment until where it's like, wow. Now, as you sit back and try to figure this thing out, now it's not who are you, but it's like now what are we changing to? Right, right. And even as you go through, say you lose your, you or your spouse lose a loved one. That's something that's even different. Right. And so as you're going through the grieving process, understanding how to make that, like how to flow with that particular change, it's like, how do we do that? Right. How do we do that? Like, what is that? Right. And so that's the, that's the, and that's the thing that we have to make sure that we understand is when we, when we are changing that we got to we got to kind of cuz for one you know when your taste bud changed for something else so it's like you know it got to a point where I was like okay nah, babe I you know I really don't like that right there you know what I'm saying and wish you would have told me that before I started cooking it hey right you know <laughs> let me just go get something else to eat but it's but it's those moments where you got to want to continue to be true to yourself so that you can also be true to your spouse because the thing is if you can't share how you are really feeling with your spouse, then who are you going to be sharing it with? Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? My thing, I'd rather my spouse know everything that's going that's going on with me and vice, and vice versa, right? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Amen. Are you, oh, okay. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> and so when you're and so you have to understand and so in those times or in those moments that you can't be selfish because when you're when you're being selfish you're only looking at you're only looking at only the things that you want. Right. So and without even considering your spouse. Right. And that's just a road down a disaster. Like there it, it really is. I I don't care how you try to shape it frame it, form it, whatever it is, it's just, it's a road to disaster. If you, you try to move and operate when you are to, to become one. Right. And you try to operate in selfishness. Right. And, and understand that's, um, if you, if you're able to master that one, please let us know, please. Cause they're, uh, <laughs> it's just like, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm telling you, but the one thing about it though, when you're being selfless, man, you're being humble. Yeah. And as how can, for you know, I'm just going to say men, just looking at the order of God, but when you are being humble, you know, it's, it's, you are able to teach your spouse humility because you set, you set the example. Is it saying that every day is going to be peaches and cream? No, because if every day was peaches and cream, then my question is how will you grow? If all you know is just peaches and cream, because remember, if we didn't know what a rainy day looked like, then how would we know how good the sun is when it shines? You know what I'm saying? If we never went through a brutal cold month, then how would we know what the nice summer months feel like? Right. So even understanding, you know, your yeah, your your marriage is gonna go is gonna go through its season, but you gotta understand that a lot of times that your seasons that your marriage go through is just like when you look at Summer. Summer is that time everybody's just having a ball, enjoying. But then when your when your summer begins to now go into another season of fall, what happens in fall? Things that was once green are now starting to fall off. Because yeah, your marriage might be going through a winter time. And you and you I mean, just think about how you feel in the winter time. A lot of us are groggy and all that stuff. Yes, your marriages go through that. But it's the one thing that I love is that, you know, like when it get like real cold, you know how like the top layer of the water is, is of, of water is frozen, but you still have a steady flow underneath it. Mm. So if you can continue to keep your love as that steady flow that's deep below the ice piece, then you're going to make it through the winter. When we lived in Alaska, they hit that season that it was called breakup. That means that was when the ice was literally breaking up and, you know, turning into water and, you know, began to flow and do its own thing. You know how water do. And so when I when you look at that, now that breakup that's in your marriage is not you separating, it's you breaking off the old way. 
and making room for your spring because your spring is your new. And so you have to understand, and what takes place in spring is that's when you begin to recognize your growth. Because just because things might be frozen at the moment, God is still working things right there underneath. So that's why you have to make sure you keep your water that flows, your liquid love flowing. Not just that stuff that's on the on the top portion, but you keep it flowing so that because God is gonna God is gonna do so, you just got to make it to your spring. Because when you make it to your spring, God is gonna show you the newness, and then you're gonna also recognize even the closeness that you all have just gotten. Right, I, and that was really really good. I was just gonna add that if you think about selfishness, at the root of selfishness is pride. So if, and if you think about, I'm just thinking about just in a daily marriage and in a daily relationship and a daily walk that you're having with your spouse, your partner, your, your um, husband, your wife, your girlfriend, fiance, however you want to, you know, communicate it or name it. If you think about that in a sense of you're having a disagreement, you're having a disagreement because you don't agree with what, what was said or what was done, but it boils over into then the argument because self and interjects and sets it up and it says, no, I'm right. Mm. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. So then that's the pride. I'm right. I'm right. Right. I'm right. I'm right. (laughs) The pride in each individual. So if you can stop in any moment, and I know sometimes it's really hard in the height of the moment. Right. But if you can stop in any moment and just like, you know what? I'm good. I'm sorry. Maybe I don't agree with that for right now. But let's maybe let's just squash it just because we're making it into a situation where it really doesn't have to be that. Right. And if you think about it in that particular sense, like I said, it's pride. And how do you kill or dismiss, dismiss pride? With love, with kindness, with gentleness, right. with humbleness. And, and that's not to say that you should always be the doormat, the, the door still. I remember at one point in our marriage, I kept saying, I, I, I'm sick of always taking the high road. I'm sick of, <laughs> I'm, I don't want to do the high road. I want to be right. I know I'm right, but at, at what point was I to say, okay, God, I know I'm right, but do I have to continue to go forth and make this argument of what it is just to prove that I'm right? Mm, mm, mm. Is it really worth that? Right. Is it really, is it really worth that? And so yes, yeah, that's that's the thing because when you're being when you're being selfish, you're actually only looking at it one side. So then and the thing is when you come to your time of disagreement, guess what? It's okay to disagree. It so is, yes. Yo you don't have to be right because I mean, granted, even if she can say, Baby, listen. If you put that over there, it's not going to work. It's going to fall over. And I'll be like, no, I do it all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be right. Well, no, it's not. Why go through all that and then just be like, you know what? You got it. So then it come out. So if it's standing up straight, I'm going to be like, see, look, I told you. It's fine. And then the wind blows and it falls over Then Like, see, I told you. I said, okay, got you. Why? Because now I, I understand that it wasn't sturdy. And so you have to understand that if you cannot swallow your pride, because you can still keep what your view is, but if you cannot cannot swallow your pride, then it begins to go into something else. Understand the scripture tells us that pride comes before destruction and a hearty spirit before fall. And so you have to understand what are you trying to are you trying to destroy? Or because because once once you destroy, everything is going to collapse. Right. Pride comes before destruction, and a hearty spirit, uh, and a hearty spirit before fall. And so it's the same thing. But it's like, well, okay, fine. So we going back and forth. The same thing. The scripture tells us that what a kind word turns away wrath. Yep. So I remember one. I remember one time when we was going at it years ago. I just hit her with, and she's like, Eric, you are blah blah blah. And I said, God, dog, you are so pretty. I guess he did. <laughs> and totally blew her. Didn't know what to do. Didn't know what to say. Ooh, yes, he did. Because it turned away the wrath that she was bringing. Right, right. And so sometimes we have to set that example. And it was so funny because I was mad one day, and I was talking to my daughter. You know, it was a little strong, a little strong. She came up to me, and she says, 
Daddy, you're so pretty. I say, oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm sorry. Why? Because his word is so true. It turns away wrath. And then when you turn away wrath, sometimes you know, yeah, you want to go back to it, but now you got to come back to it with, with something different. Come with a solution. Right. That's reasoning. Because, okay, hey, you see it your way, I see it my way, but we have to, we have to make a decision. So now this is where we reason it. It's right. okay to reason with one another. So the situation with my son's car, oh, we, were able, we were able to reason. So after he went through and he got, you know, everything taken care of with the car, um, he called and he got the answers that he was looking for. He called me back. He gave me the information. I still didn't think that it was valuable because in my mind, I knew what, what we were going to be doing. So we Hold on. Wait a minute. But did you, did you hear what? I just, knew. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> so it was in my selfishness. Absolutely. So it was in my selfishness. I knew what we were going to be doing. But then after we sat down and we started talking, he gave me some insight that I would have never, ever considered before as we were talking about why he wanted that information and why it was important to him. So it was really important for me to then step away from my own selfishness, for me to get out of my own pride, for me to step aside and say, okay, you know what? Like, he always did with the car. Why am I even upset? Because I decided, well, no, 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 no. I think you, you asked EJ. That's what happened. You, he trying asked to teach EJ my son how to be a man. To do it. And EJ started talking, and he, he was getting a little frustrated with trying to take care of the business with his car, and he just put me on the speakerphone. So then I started to ask the right questions that he wasn't able to ask. So that was, that was how I, you know, got into the situation. And after I talked to the, the mechanic, I knew at that moment what I wanted to be able to do. And so after I stepped aside and got out of the selfishness, we did decide to come together and make an end reason together so that we could have one solid agreement on what we were going to do with the vehicle. Right. And so, but again, it, it will take that. You have to take the moment and be like, listen, Am I going to continue to go on and allow my word to um, crush my spouse when I'm supposed to be the one to build up? Because understand, in our moment of selfishness, what comes right along? Understand, selfishness don't come, but it, it don't. It to me, I, I come to understand that it does not come by itself. It's going to come with, um, it's going to come with frustration. Yeah. Then frustration is going to bring anger with it, and then anger is going to bring hatred with it. So then it's like, how far are we going to allow this chain to go? So it's just like, okay, listen, once I, once, I, once I begin to feel frustrated, I just said, you know what? It's cool. It's fine. It's whatever. So then once I had my woo moment, and, I, and, you know, and she had her woo moment, it was like, help me to understand. Okay, so now this is why. Boom, 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 boom. Then it was like, you know what? You're right. Because I even said while we on the phone, I had said I'm just taking a, this is what we call a shot because I'm taking a shot right now. So <laughs> when we was on the phone, I even said, I said, you don't even handle the cars. Why? Why won't you do this? So, but I mean, but now it's like, oh, okay, babe, I got you. And so oftentimes, man, when you are, when you, you know, sometimes we can even allow our gifts to run interference. Because she has such a gift of administration and, and help. It's like, yo, I got to go. I got to make, make it happen. I, I, I got you. Make it work. But this ain't your area of expertise. Right. So sometimes we got to also know how to pull the reins back and right. say, okay, God, you gave me someone that can handle this, so I'm going to go ahead and let them handle it. Right. You understand Absolutely. what I'm saying? And so that's that thing that when you're talking about being selfish, remember, even as, even as um, we go from, you know, from this day and moving forward with you, think about where, where am I selfish at with, with my spouse? And how can I even better that to even better our marriage? Right. You know, I'm going to be like, you know, for me, then with, with wifey, wifey like going to these exotic beaches and stuff. I love me, it. I'm fine with just, you know, <laughs> going down to the, uh, <laughs> to the local hotel and chilling. You know what I'm saying? That's me, but so it's like, okay, you, these are the things you like, fine. Then I, I can enjoy these moments. And just like how at first she didn't like, you know, riding on the bike. Now it's like, okay, she, she set aside her fear, and like now she jumped on the bike. And it's fine because when you sit yourself aside, you may come to recognize that you might even enjoy even what your differences might even be. Right. 
That's really good. That's, so just remember that, like, nothing good comes of pride. Um, pride comes before only contention. Um, and with the well-advised is wisdom. So always, if you can just set aside, if just one of you, if not both of you, at least one of you can set aside just a moment to really think about, okay, we're good. Let's, let's go ahead. You're, you're right in this moment. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about this later so you can mm. actually reason about it. Then that way you can come together on common ground. And, again, just let it be fruitful because one simple thing can boil into something humongous that right. it doesn't really have to be right. as a result of pride and you being selfish. Right. So just always remember, as we're one, we should come together with love and a kind word turns away that wrath. Mm-hmm. It really does. It really does. And so understand the songwriter say, if you don't, if you don't, if you think that your spouse is selfish all the time, then understand this. Songwriter wrote a song. He said, the change you want to see must first begin in me. I surrender. So if you're going to surrender unto God, then you be the change. Right. And how, how, how can you be the change? Remember, it only takes one person to set the example. And so it does not matter how long you have to set that example. It's just that that change has to start with you. And so if you're saying that I want to better my marriage, and, I, you know, I'm grateful for, you know, everyone that is on and taking notes and what have you, but it's just an encouragement to let you know, you know, your marriage, because I'm saying this, your marriage is going to be what you make it. If you make it a hell hole, that's what it's going to be. Right. But if you're going to make it a day, a, a time of joy and fun, then, then guess what? That's what it's going to be. But, you know, it's not saying that we did not have our differences, but one thing I can guarantee you this, <laughs> one thing's for sure and two for certain, is that <laughs> my glory days, all my joyous days, show enough outweigh all of, all of our bads, and we started out with some rough ones. You hear me? Yes. But it, <laughs> but it's now it's in a joy. Why? Because now we we un, we understand, and then we also well we understand one another, and then we're still constantly still learning one another. Because the thing is now you don't want your marriage to get a little little stale. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep that fire in that thing. You hear me? Right. You hear that, Coach D? I know you're getting <laughs> ready to get started, but keep the fire burning. Keep Don't that. let anything stop that Woo! fire from burning. But keep that fire burning. And so that's that thing because I, I, one time she said to me, she said to me, she says, babe, you know, you never cease to amaze me. Yeah. That right there tells me, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we, we keeping that fire going. And so I, uh, she was she saw a bodybuilder and they had some big arms. I said, well, my arms used to be big. So I had to slim down this um this keg and I had to get get back in the in the weight room, you hear me? So but you know, it's but it's you know, it's for us, it's just it was just all in fun. And so, you know, it's it's a joy because, you know, I got it, I need it. I wanna be healthy, you know, I wanna I wanna see my daughter graduate college or something. So but it's it's those things that when you say, Hey, I'm gonna sit aside this time so that I'm gonna sit aside my my desire so that I can, you know, see what you're saying. Or I'm going to set aside what I believe so that I can understand what you're saying. Because, you know, if you don't set your selfishness aside, it's going to even be hard for you to even fathom what the, what the other person is even saying. Right. And then another thing, it boils over into the children as well. Oh, yeah. It's a learned behavior. So always remember that your example and how you love your spouse the children are learning and watching the same thing. Yes, that they are. Yeah. And so um, if you have any questions, we we truly thank God. Because I, I know that it's coming down to our hour. We sure enough thank God for you all um, tuning in. Uh, we do apologize in the early because, okay, for all the technical oh, my God, we had so much technical stuff going on. I'm thinking everything was set right. But, hey, it, you know, it is what it is. We thank God for truly having his way. Um, on this evening, so but please, you know, if you if you have any questions, concerns, comments, you know, hey, shoot us on the email. Go ahead, do all yeah, that. Yeah, shoot us on the email and then um or inbox us. We also have a podcast, Marriage Takeover. So on your Apple phones or for all you joysters that are out there, um, you can uh, follow us on um the Apple Podcast or the podcast app or your your uh, Droid device, it's Marriage Takeover. So be sure to follow us there for all of our previous episodes. 
And um, we thank you all so much for following with us, connecting with us. We want to absolutely thank um, When Christians Speak, Blog Talk Radio, Reverend Ray Rose, for, um, again, having the platform for us, all, everybody watching on YouTube, everybody watching on Facebook. Like, thank you guys so much. It is such an honor to be able to share what we've experienced, what we've learned, and just kind of how God is just dealing with us with being able to help build marriages and relationships. So we love you guys. We thank you guys for watching and tuning in. Um and we'll just pray out. So, Lord, for every couple that has watched us thus far, who will watch us, Lord, in the future, I just ask that you would continue to bless them, that you would watch over their families, that you would watch over their relationships, Lord, that yes, you would even help them to understand their own selfishness, God, that mm. they not be so quick to point out somebody else's selfishness, Lord, but they would continue, Lord, to just work on them, God. Show them them. Develop that relationship to nurture to get personal with you, Lord, that yes. you would continue to just have your way. Yes. Build them up, Lord. Strengthen them, God, in the name of Jesus. Mm. I ask that you would mend any hurt, Lord, that you would make them whole mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, that you would have your way, God, in their lives. Yes. Lord, that you would pour your oil out over them, their families, their children, God, their relationships, the people that are connected to them. Lord, allow their relationships, their marriages to be a blessing to yes. others, to be an example yes. to others yes. of what you would have and have designed for marriage to be, Lord. Mm. We thank you, God, for the, the, the couples that are engaged, the couples that are married, the couples that are even divorced, the couples that are remarried. God, we thank you for the relationship. Yes. We thank you for your example. We thank yes. you for your love. Yes. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you for your faithfulness. Yes. We thank you, God, for your joy. Uh -huh. We thank you for your deliverance. And we just ask, God, that you would seal the marriages, the relationships yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Have your way, God, in Have our lives, Have your way, Lord. Father. Be used, God. Be that instrument. Use us, God, as your instrument, God. Mm -hmm. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man. We love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in to Marriage Takeover. Connect with us on Facebook at Marriage Takeover. Yeah.